Sarah, hello everybody. Good evening. Well, good afternoon in London, where I am is evening. Nero is just joining in. Hi, <laughs> Nero, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Yes. So, have you um, had lunch? Yes, I've already had lunch. Great. Well, so lovely to see you. Um, so, to everybody who's watching, this is Nari Takahashi. We're very honored to have her today as our guest for the New Talent Live Chat series. Um, so, Nero, would you like to start by introducing yourself? Um, hello, I'm Naori. Um, I currently go to the Royal Academy of Music studying for my postgrad degree. And I'm also a Royal Future First violinist of the London Philharmonic Orchestra this year. But unfortunately, all the active, most of the activities have been cancelled or postponed either way. Mm. Yes, sadly. So, um, Nero, could you tell us a little bit more about um, what Fu FOIL Future First is and what sort of opportunity it is? Um, so, it's kind of like a training scheme for young orchestral musicians from um, fourth, basically graduate, um, graduate orchestral players and they give you lessons, tutoring, and sit-in opportunities, and sometimes even concert opportunities with them. And it's been really great so far, because you don't really get to play with mm. uh, a professional orchestra that easily yes. these days. Yes. And it's been really great. Great. So um, how many sessions have you done sort of sitting in alongside LPO performance? Um, before this all started, before yes uh, before the covid um i did quite a few sessions maybe like five to ten like maybe like seven okay so Great. you get to sit in the rehearsal with the conductor and yeah. blend in with the section basically but i got and also to play in two of the concerts in the autumn term which was great mm -hmm. yes um no i've heard about the program you know for many years now um and no friends who benefited hugely from that project um so it is a sh such a shame that now that you know because of what's happening surrounding covid that you can't continue the sort of in-person training with them but are you still continuing some sort of lessons with um the lpl musicians um yeah so we get eight hours of like one-to-one -one lessons with them and mm -hmm. i've had quite a few in person already but i had a few hours left so we are making it up on zoom like online yeah okay great yes no it's 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 a huge honor as well to everybody's watching it's a really um it's a really prestigious scheme and very difficult to get into. You need to go through auditions. So that's a great achievement. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, as, as um, Nelra mentioned, that she's, um, you're currently doing a postgrad now at the Academy. Yeah. Um, could you tell us, because of what's happening um, surrounding COVID, and I know that the academy has been closed since what March, um, sort of late March. Yeah. So, could you tell us a little bit about what studying at the academy has been like during this time? Um, so, I had quite a few concerts and engagements and stuff inside academy and also outside academy, and that just disappeared in like a few days. Yeah. It was quite a big shock. I think it was just very unexpected. So, but we've tried to, the Academy has been keeping us informed and trying to involve us in different um, projects and stuff. We did, we did some recordings with the whole department, which is probably supposed to come up quite soon. And we've also just continued our lessons online. 
and I've also had a few excerpt classes with our visiting professors, which have been really useful, along mm. with my um, LPO lessons. They've been a good inspiration in this time. Yes. So it's clearly um, changed your schedule a lot, this um, COVID. Um, could you tell us how, um, you know, me personally, especially at the beginning of this period, I found it quite difficult to have, you know, a structure of the day and then to think, you know, how do I practice, etc. So could you tell us what, um, what sort of structure are you adopting right now? And what sort of practice um, routine that you're, you're adopting? I'm like, I'm trying to keep a structure to my day, but I mean, it's quite difficult because you're not working towards anything specific. I only have a lesson a week and this, after coming from such a busy lifestyle into this really mm. slow, quiet one, it's been such mm -hmm. a big shock. So I try to keep it varied and not just practice, but just take my time to do the things that I couldn't do before and didn't mm. have the time to do before, like watching movies and stuff, just simple things you can do at home, but to keep your mind like fresh and mm. occupied without thinking too much about like what's coming and being worried about it. Mm. And also, do you find that it gives you some time to sort of with your music especially go back to the basics and sort of really think about um whether it's your technique or it's um, um musicality wise you know what what one piece of music meant to you um i like it's been quite a different way of practicing recently because i don't have this line of concerts anymore that i need to work towards so I can I find that I can learn new pieces slower and I have the time to actually properly learn them put them into my fingers and also mm -hmm. revisit some of my old repertoire that I might have neglected along the way and mm -hmm. it's been great because there's always a new discovery whenever you go back to the old pieces and you can put new input into it mm. yes so in terms of connecting with other musicians, um, I know from um, looking at your Instagram, you've been doing um, collaborations online with um, fellow musicians. Mm -hmm. um, how has that been? Has that been sort of quite easily uh, musically and techno technologically? Is that a, a word? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and what, do you have any sort of new discoveries um, when you do that online, remotely with people? I mean, I find it quite difficult <laughs> coming from playing so much chamber music with other people to like no interaction at all. Mm. It's, and we've like, obviously we all want to play, still play music together. So mm. recording it one after the other is the only option. And it's been quite... Uh, difficult like change because mm. it's always not the same to n not be in the same room and mm. be able to like see their movements and have eye contact and breathe hear them breathe it's mm. been quite difficult and i'm like very look much looking forward to playing <laughs> actual chamber music with them yeah. Yes. So um, your normal chamber music group, is it the um, violin piano duo? That... Yeah, I play a lot with um, pianist Michelle and we like we both go to the academy. So we rehearse a lot there. We also play in a piano quartet together as well. So oh, great. that's been quite that's been fun. But I mean, it's we're not in the same country right now, and it's mm. not, it's it's a bit strange for all our concerts to be cancelled and stuff like that. Yes, yes. So, in terms of um, practice, I wondered if um, you have a few kind of 
tips that you are using to help yourself to focus a little bit more or have specific goals each day, something like that? Um, I think my lessons have been quite useful, like keeping me on track, actually learning mm. stuff and doing stuff for the next lesson. But also I try to, whenever I feel like no motivation, I try to think about when this is all over. And if I don't do anything now, then I've wasted all this time that I could have used. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's quite difficult to keep track. Mm. And whenever I, I feel like I want to not do anything, may, I, I want to embrace that because now I have all this time as well. So yeah. I try to have more contact with my feelings and try to portray that into the music later when I actually get the motivation back. Mm. Yes. So um, apart from music, um, you said you are watching movies and doing things that relax you. And I think, you know, on Instagram especially, I see so many people have picked up baking or cooking it seems like everyone's become you know really good chef now i think it's so important that we find things outside of our sort of career focus to help relax our mind because for me personally especially when there's a, a big block of time i tend to get quite stressed that i think oh i should be working or practicing all day where you know probably that's not very healthy so um how um apart from your musical friends um i know this distance and this um 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 how to say the block on travel um means that we can't really be with friends and family physically so are you um using zoom or whatever to keep in touch with your friends and family yeah i'm i we do video calls we some of us did this um we played the game online and that was that was fun we i tried to keep in touch with them like in with the music as well we do recordings and stuff and also out of just talk chatting with them about day-to-day -day stuff but actually there's not that much to talk about anymore <laughs> because we always <laughs> <laughs> yes hopefully this won't last much longer yeah right so we can go out in the world and experience mm -hmm. something new to talk about yes exactly yes have you sort of picked up anything new in this time um i've i mean i try to go outside more often it's not really anything like a hobby but it's because i do normally go outside every day but now you don't think about it normally because you are just doing your day-to-day -day mm. stuff. But now my day-to-day -day is indoors, so I like consciously try to go outside. And yeah. now you can't go to restaurants, so I try to cook more. But <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. Yes. Now London is having really good weather now, isn't it? Um. Yeah. Except today is really cloudy. So oh, okay. <laughs> back to normal <laughs> London weather. <laughs> yeah. No, so Nori, I just, I recently saw, um, I was just, uh, I think because NYO, the National Youth Orchestra of um, Great Britain was doing this campaign for their planet um, mm -hmm. project. And I saw a photo uh, either on their website or on one of their platforms. And I saw you. So oh. <laughs> I didn't realize um, you were um, a member of the NYO in the past. So how many mm -hmm. years were you um, in the orchestra? Um, I was in it for the last two years of my school years, so just sixth form, when I mm -hmm. was, so from 2013 to 2015, and okay. yeah, so two years I was in NYU for. Yeah, what would you say was your highlight during those two years? Um, I would say the highlight was we, um, in my second year, so my last year, we got to go abroad on a trip like a concert okay. and we went to Berlin to play at Berlin Concert House and that was great because Lovely. it was very emotional actually <laughs> oh 
it was right after the BBC proms and that was really great as well but the bond you um the bond you like get with all the members mm. and the conductor and the pieces you play is like mm. builds up throughout the year because mm. you're with the people for the whole year and yeah it, it was really emotional for me <laughs> because uh. the last concert of my MYA yes yeah but I'm sure you're keeping in touch with a lot of your NYO friends mm -hmm. most now. a lot of them go to academy still mm. with me so yeah oh, great no I um so like you I was uh, a member of the NYO in my last two years of school as well yes because I know a lot of people are in the orchestra for a long time I remember when I joined um everyone sort of already knew everyone because they've been there for four or five years but it was a very um very good experience for me and a lot of musical highlights and um also a lot of social highlights because um so i came from beijing to school in england when i was 15. so nyo was really um the only other environments the the second environments i'd been in since my school in England. So mm. that gave me another sort of dimension to Britain. Um, so I learned a huge amount um, in the orchestra. It was a great experience. So Nori, you won um, Gold Award last year in mm -hmm. our 2019 competition and also won the British Music Society Prize. So fantastic achievement. <laughs> could, you, um, um, could you sort of sum it up into um, what would you think was your highlight in the competition? Of course, the winning um, of the awards. Um, but what did you like um, in the competition? I think the whole experience in itself was really, it like, it highlighted my work before the competition because it gave me a goal to work towards. And it, the repertoire was quite free so it gave me an opportunity to like showcase what I have been the work I've been putting in into these pieces because a lot of competitions don't allow that sort of freedom and it's quite difficult to be studying like you're at a university thing and try to have that many rep set repertoire ready but it was mm. really good that I could put into practice what I have been learning throughout the months before. Great. Great. That's fantastic to hear. Um, and you won, you won the British Music Society Prize um, by playing a British piece. <laughs> uh, and it was a new piece it was a modern piece and it hasn't really been played very much no. uh, in the past and you your version of it was you know very moving so that's why um you know the award went to you and this year we also have we still have the british music society prize um i wondered if you could um share a few advice or experience on how you prepared the british mm -hmm. piece so I think the this is like the moment where you can put into your imagination because it hasn't been played that often and there's not that many like examples of how to play the piece. So I embraced it as an opportunity to just be able to do whatever I ever wanted and just like broaden my imagination with it. Mm. And then I think just to like start, I would just go find the melody and the phrasing first so that you can work with that. And then I think from there, your own imagination will take you to whatever version of the piece you can present on the day. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the advice. Um, and I'm sure I'm now asking for a lot of young musicians here because clearly you're very good at the violin. <laughs> um, <laughs> and 
also uh you you must be very good at doing auditions too because you know getting into the academy you need audition um to get on the for your future first you need to audition and you won two awards top awards at our competition last year so clearly you know how to you know present yourself um on a stage or present yourself you know whatever the um audition environment is so this year because of um covid we're doing everything online and they'd have to the young musician would have to um record their performance mm -hmm. do you have any advice for them on how best to present themselves in a video competition um to comment on the actual recording i think the best thing is to because it's not something you do a lot i think for most musicians i think it's quite a last minute thing you have to do like if they ask for something some recording and you don't like practice it so much as practicing to play live on the stage and mm -hmm. i think that is the most difficult part for me because you're not so experienced in it and i think the best way is to start small and start recording some bits of your practice and stuff like that so you just get used to the camera being there and mm. then after that you can once once you get used to it and you get to the actual recording stage i think that my best advice would be to not record so many takes after another because it takes so much concentration mm. and energy just playing through your program like yeah. as in a live performance but you try to do so many takes one after the other and that's just like physically not possible i think and i think it actually takes more concentration than a live performance in, mm. because there's no adrenaline standing in front of a camera i think <coughs> as i think the audience does it for you in the live performances mm. but in a recording you have to imagine this thing that is not there and try to play it the maximum you can but i think it's difficult to pull out this potential in your playing when you're not physically standing on the stage so i think just not taking too many clips after the other is a good mm -hmm. advice and just start afresh the next day or something mm. yes i think so sort of just not do too many right and then yeah. maybe do it over a few days mm. yeah great um so nary do you have um uh we have one question coming in from the audience um <coughs> so okay so here's the um question which project you've been in has been your favorite so far um a project i think the best project so to speak at the academy i think have has been the one of the trips like the concert trips that we had in collaboration with another conservatoire so i think it was summer 2018 we had a a collaboration concert tour with the Geidai Academy at in Tokyo so they came and we rehearsed in the academy and we did two concerts in london and three concerts in japan and we all flew there and that that was really fun because i can imagine yeah it was it was great playing the same it was like a proper concert tour so we played the same pieces mm -hmm. and we were so we could actually enjoy it because we knew this piece so well and mm -hmm. we actually got to enjoy the trip and that was fun Great. So Geidai is um what the uh uh University of Arts Japan, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's the um 
my understanding is that that's the top、uh, music conservatory conservatory in Japan. I think so. I'm not very sure about like the whole.、Mm. There's private ones and public ones,、okay. in, and it's a bit confusing. <laughs> I see. I've just heard of、um, Gaidai so many times. Yeah, they're very lucky. Very lucky.、Um, yeah. I, Great. Yeah, I've never. Yes, I studied at the academy for six years. I don't think I went on a concert tour. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was like to mark the. Collaboration or to mark some year of like collaboration with both schools, I think. Yeah, a fantastic opportunity for、yeah. for the musicians, I'm sure. Yeah. So now are you? Um, I know we're going to be treated to a live performance <laughs> by you, but do you have any question for me before the performance? Um, I have a few, or maybe just one. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I was wondering if you had any like any advice, anything you've discovered throughout this lockdown period, where where everything's just stopped, to like spark some inspiration for the other young musicians like me. <laughs> um, I would say that I I certainly discovered a lot of things. Um, in in sort of this my environment and also within myself,、um, it's been such a difficult time、um, around the world, and I can see people around me really struggling,、uh, whether it's financially or just the pure strain of not being able to be with their loved ones,、um, or some sometimes even worse that their loved ones are、um, suffering from COVID. So it, it's been a hugely worrying time for the whole world and the economy. And then, you know, now we need to think what's the after effect and everything else is all very complicated. But I think it's it's especially in times like this, we、uh, and also thinking as a musician and thinking as a I tend to think musicians are communicators because yes, we play a very complicated instrument, but. Um, what we want to do as an end result is not to show off how good we are technically or anything else, but to communicate what we think to our audience, and then for them to communicate back.、Um, and I think as a communicator,、um, I think it's, I, and I can see everyone doing that. It's to share、um, and be very honest with each other, and share the positive, share the negative, and. And I think the other day I was thinking the most important thing for me is to learn to and always rem- remind myself to always keep going. You know, for example, this year, of course, the competition is having a difficult time too. The new talent competition.、Um, we don't have a sponsor this year because of the knock-on effect of COVID. So I've、um, had to do a lot of things.、Um, Suddenly, because I can't really afford a bigger team, it,、um, if we then I can't afford as big a team as then if we had the funding.、Um, it's it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge on my brain and my heart.、Um, but I think、um, I wanted to crack on. I wanted to keep going, and the result. Well, I'm I'm not sure that what the result will be. Hopefully a good one, but already I'm enjoying the the process, the journey that I'm seeing. You know, I'm having chat with you.、Um, you know, really getting to know you and other musicians.、Um, it's all an inspiration to me, and I learn so much.、Um, and I think that it's、um, this kind of situation urges us to really think out of the box.、Yeah. That you need to think what is.、Um, You don't think what's impossible. You just think what you want to do, and then you create ways to do it. Yeah.、Um, so I think running this thing is that case. But also, maybe as musicians, you know, we probably because I think as classical musicians, we tend to have a lot of rules, right? You think I have to perform a certain way, or play a certain piece a certain way, a certain style a certain way. 
But I think uh, maybe sometimes it's important to try something else and try something you truly believe in. I think there is no point in pretending or forcing something. It has to be within you. And as soon as you find what you truly love, you know, I love music. So the love of music inspired me to do this. And once you have that, I don't think, I think you're unstoppable. So um, that's my little bit of thought. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think it's very important to be like flexible in every situation because you don't know what's coming or next. And mm. all you can do is be flexible and try to do the best you can, I think. Yes, yes. No, so, no, I'm sure, Naomi, I know your worries um, that all these opportunities and especially you are a up and coming young musician and you have the whole world in front of you and you have all these brilliant opportunities that now it seems that you lost them for now but mm -hmm. I think you just keep doing what you want to do what you're meant to do they will always come back and more will come yeah you just have to keep trying I think <laughs> yes definitely mm -hmm. Great. So, Nari, what, um, what are you performing for us today? Um, I'll what just perform that? something short today, something to lighten up the mood, I think. It's Great. the jig from Third Party to Bye Bye. Fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for organizing so the interview. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. I really love, <laughs> um, I wish we had more time. Um, but uh, when I'm back in London, I'll mm -hmm. let you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Thank you so much for today. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you for your advice. And thank you for your performance. No problem. Oh, there's thank a meal. Is that your sister? <laughs> yes. Mia's little loving eyes, yes. Yes, no. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Nara, and you, and you take thank care. You. Yeah, see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Nari. Bye, everybody.